The Parable of the Good Samaritan, Chapter 5. There are a lot of them, that's all I know. Too many to fend off by myself. And maybe there's just one. I can't really tell. But it seems like there's too many to count. A punch in the nose, a kick to the ribs, a stomp in the gut, a twist of the arm, and then it starts all over again. Different order, same result. Everything's gone black. And so I'm swimming <clears throat> in and out of consciousness. I can't make heads or tails of anything. In reality, it always seems to be within my grasp, but each and every single time that I reach out to touch it, my fingers can't. It proves to be impossibly far away from me. And then one moment, the sun is directly overhead, and the next, I'm sure that it's set closer to the horizon. And I'm cold, so terribly, terribly cold. Why would I be so cold? Maybe I'm naked. I'm not even sure. Wow, they did a doozy on me, didn't they? I'm dying. And there's no other way to say it. And the worst part is, there's nothing that I can do about it. And I know it. And then there comes that spinning consciousness again. I see the face of the man, the one that I'd passed by a moment ago, an hour, a day, a month. It doesn't really matter anymore, does it? But we're one and the same. <clears throat> that stranger and me. Just look at the two of us. We have something in common now. Guess that means he really is my neighbor, doesn't it? I'm not too sure, but I think I remember a couple of people passing by me. They were both dressed in their finest to fine. One was a priest, I think. No, he had to be a priest. I could just tell by the way that he carried himself. <clears throat> and the strangest thing happened. I can't really describe it and why it's so strange, but it was almost as if he took no notice of me. He just hiked up his tunic and walked on by like I was nothing. And then the other guy, I'm pretty sure that I've seen at the temple before. I'm pretty sure he was there a lot. Maybe he was a Levite. And when they come closer, every time, or both times, I feel a sense of hope and relief swelling up inside of me until the pain swells my head again and I drift off to that place between life and death, between heaven and hell. And each time I wake up alone in the exact same place. And it all must have been a dream. Or maybe I'm just hallucinating because if it really happened and either of those two men were who I thought they were, they would have helped me. But they didn't. And I'm alone. And I'm dying. I'm as good as dead. Thanks for watching us talk at you. If you want to see us talk at you some more, subscribe to see notifications when we talk at you the next time. Donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. Help us to help you. And if you like this video, check out our website at higherthings.org and check out more content from Higher Things.